Hi, I'm Nathan W. Bingham with Ligonier Ministries, and we are here in London for our London conference. We're also hosting a couple of study tours while we're here, and I'm joined by Dr. Steve Nichols. He's president of Reformation Bible College, also the host of the Five Minutes in Church History podcast. Dr. Nichols, it's great to have you with us. Oh, it's great to be with you, Nathan. I love visiting these church history sites with you, and this is a great one. It is. It is the Tower of London. Over here is Tower Bridge. Now millions of people every year come and tour this tower. Why do they come here and what are they looking at? Yeah, this is an iconic place. Of course, it's the architecture of Tower Bridge. It's the architecture of the tower. Uh, you can see the four turreted white tower that's the center of the Tower of London. Uh, it was constructed by William the Conqueror in 1078. And over the centuries, it's been a palace, a fortress, and a prison. But I suspect uh, most of the tourists come here to see the crown jewels. They're inside the tower, and I think that's what draws most of them here. Now that is what most people are thinking of, the crown jewels. But when we think of the English Reformation, there's another side of, to the story. There is, and this is a very special place. Uh, behind us is Trader's Gate, and so these prisoners would be brought up the Thames through Trader's Gate and held here in the tower. Uh, they'd be tortured, they'd be persecuted, and many of them were eventually martyred. Uh, they would be forced and, and offered to recant their faith, and they'd be told your, your fortunes would be restored, you'd, you'd be released as a prisoner if you would just recant your faith. Uh, but many stood true to the faith here and are witnesses, are martyrs for the faith uh, here in the tower. Now, do we know any of the people that would have sailed through Traders Gate there and been in the tower? Yes, among the many that were persecuted here early on in the reign of Bloody Mary, and this is in the 1550s, Thomas Cranmer was brought here. He was the Archbishop under Henry VIII, uh, then he was the Archbishop under Edward VI, and he pushed through so many reforms here in England. And then, of course, after Edward VI, Mary comes to the throne, and she's Roman Catholic, and very early in her reign, Thomas Cranmer is arrested, he's brought here. He was joined by bishops Ridley and Latimer, and all three of them were taken from the tower and taken to Oxford, and there in Oxford, they were martyred. As we walked by the tower, we looked at Traitor's Gate, and there's a mm. sign there, and it mentions Lady Jane Grey. Could you share some of her story? Oh, uh, she's, a, she's a remarkable figure in church history. Uh, first of all, she taught herself Greek so that she could read the New Testament. That's incredible. And it, it is. And then on top of that, she corresponds with Martin Bootser, the reformer, for the best course of study to learn Hebrew. So she taught herself Hebrew so she could read the Old Testament. And once Edward VI dies, there's a concern with Mary coming to the throne. She's Roman Catholic, and so a large group wanted to keep Mary from ascending to the throne. And through a series of machinations, Jane is put forth as the queen. They were successful in getting her to the throne, but not so successful in keeping her there. She had a very short reign. She is known as England's nine-day queen. And when Mary ascended the throne, she of course was rested, brought through Traitor's Gate and held as a prisoner here in the tower. Now when she was here, she was given the opportunity to recant her Protestant faith. Yes, she was, and she was eventually interviewed by Freckenham, the Archbishop, and he's going through all these doctrines with her, and he gets to the doctrine, the doctrine of justification by faith alone. And Freckenham says to Lady Jane Grey, uh, it is not just by faith, it, salvation must be of works, and he says this, faith alone is not sufficient to save. Well, immediately, Jane Grey replies that I deny that, and I affirm that faith only justifies. Now, she goes on to say that good works demonstrate that we are followers of our master, that we are obedient to our Lord Jesus Christ. And then she adds, may we never say that good works contribute to our salvation. She has this beautiful line at the very end of this. She says, uh, when all is said and done, we are but unprofitable servants, and faith only in Christ's blood can save us. I mean, it's a remarkable statement of justification by faith alone. She's 16 years old, she's on trial for her life, and she's being examined by the archbishop. 
And she makes that statement so precise, so eloquent, and such a testimony of standing for the faith. What do you think it was that gave her this confidence, this boldness at age 16? Yeah. Well, we know she read the Bible. We know she loved the Bible. And when you think about this, Nathan, you know, prior to the Reformation, the Bible was kept from people, a true famine of the Word of God. And with the Reformers giving people the Bible, now she can read the Bible. And what does she find in it? The Gospel. And what does she find in the Gospel but Christ? This is the source of her confidence. She wasn't, she was very gifted, she's very talented, but she wasn't relying on her gifts and talents. Uh, she was confident in the gospel and ultimately she was confident in her savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, what we see in Jane Grey really is the essence of the Reformation. It's that sola scriptura, scripture alone, and then sola fide, that salvation is through faith alone, by grace alone, in Christ alone. And Lady Jane Grey's testimony here in the Tower of London just speaks to that so well and very much encouraging us in our day. It was just a little bit after that examination with Freckenham that she was led from her prison cell and there on the grounds of the Tower of London, she was beheaded, uh, martyred for the faith. Well, Dr. Nichols, thank you for being with us. Thanks for giving us just a little glimpse into some of the history of the Tower of London. Oh, my pleasure. It's a great sight. It's great to be with you, Nathan. Well, if you'd like to travel with Ligonier Ministries, you can find all of the upcoming opportunities at LigonierTours.com.